All right, white, red aggro. This deck is one of the better Smorky decks in the format. It's, uh, I don't know. We played some of this earlier in the format. Uh, my One of my buddies has been testing this deck list and he said this is the, the build he would play. So we're going to pop on into a uh, casual constructed event here. Casual best of three and play this. And if we 5-0, I'm going to play this deck tomorrow. Hey, Kitty, thanks for the resub there. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Yeah, in my deck with four triple white cards, the stone quarry is better than a mountain. There's four triple white cards in my deck, so I value being able to play my magic cards. Hey, Scoobot, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. The Twitch tournament tomorrow is a casual tournament, so it's best of three. Every streamer is casting their own individual matches, Nivik, and then Twitch is casting, recasting various streams, doing official coverage, I think, on the Twitch Rivals channel. There's filthy casuals playing best of three, exactly. Welcome to Thunderdome, opponent. Enjoy your stay. Will I be commenting my matches or just playing quietly? Probably just playing quietly. Everybody's streaming on a five minute delay, Nivik, to prevent ghosting and maintain competitive integrity. The Mono Black Mainfire deck can be found on my YouTube channel. I played it a bunch in the past, it's also on my website. This is the reason to play this deck, by the way. Just like play my fourth land, kill you next turn. Nice straight stack. Every time heroic reinforcements is lethal, you have to make a Knights of Hooklandia joke. What's going on, Brecken? Thanks for the biddies. Uh, they fixed that a while ago. Changed how that was handled. Twerky later. Thanks for the six month three sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Can Is it ever beat this deck? I don't think so. I was actually thinking about playing the Is it deck, but it's just really bad against this one. I was testing a bunch of stuff against my buddy last night, and just like everything I played, he dumpstered with this deck. And I was just like, that probably means I should play this deck. I don't even think Fiery Candidate's good enough a lot of the time, Pike. Double bird here. All right. I mean, if they have if they have any draw that can stop us, it's turn three double Phoenix, right? Hands like this, you mean a hand where I cast spells? Mono Black has a hard time against this deck. Between Dauntless Bodyguard and a Danto Vanguard, you often just don't get to do much. You, your answers often don't line up well into what this deck is doing. I don't think that's strictly true Pokemon Nerd. I think one of the reasons why the Phoenix deck is good is because the Phoenixes can play defense. You have a very small number of those cards and you have to hope they line up perfectly. If you cast Golden Demise on exactly three, obviously you're gonna be fine, but... Maybe they're actually fine here. 
Seems pretty good. They have removal spell. Hey, Sunko, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Ooh. Yeah, Infect. Infect is a fine one. Thank you. Uh, Sunko, do you want that reserved explicitly for online play or do you is it okay if I record with it offline too? Let me know. Yeah, we're probably dead here actually. Just like good showing for the Phoenix deck. I, I, I Part of me hopes I just get killed two or three times with this deck and then I just like and go do something else. Just like say screw it, can't win with anything, just play the fun deck. Ubiquity, thanks for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Morning to everyone, by the way. I hope everyone's having a good start to your week. Got almost uh, 900 people here already. It's not even 9 a.m. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's the motto to a degree, Roth, but, like, if I play a deck that does well, they give me $3,000 tomorrow, so, like, that's probably something worth considering. All right, heroic reinforcements is lethal. History is not bad. They, they've had a very good draw, to be fair, I agree. Our draw was no slouch, either. Like, we were, like, a Banalia on three away from having our best possible start. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of aggro tomorrow too, which I think both Jun Dinos and uh, the Amulet deck are good against aggressive decks. Perfect, Sunko. Thank you. So we're dead next turn, so we did draw heroic reinforcements here. I guess we're, we're likely dead next turn, right? So as of right now, I think my holiday plans are going to be taking off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which is Christmas Eve and the two days before. And then I'm going to be live on Tuesday, which is Christmas, it's, which is actually Christmas after talking, talking with my boss. And I think my plan is to record enough offline matches that I can post two modern leagues on Saturday, two modern leagues on Sunday, two modern leagues on Monday. So that way there'll be new content up on each of those times. I mean, this sideboard has actual zero cards for this matchup, doesn't it? Actual zero. All right, we lost to the double Phoenix hand. I mean, Remorseful Cleric would be fine, but, like, I think this matchup is supposed to be good for this deck, so... Baffling End hits... doesn't hit Crackling Drake, and it doesn't hit the Phoenix, so I don't think it's worth bringing in. Have I done any commentary work? Once or twice a long time ago, none recently. It just doesn't... and I average it doesn't pay well enough. I'm better off just streaming rather than taking the time to go do commentary. Magic paper magic paper magic tournaments aren't popular enough that they can pay they can pay well for that kind of thing. Maybe that'll change with arena events at some point. Only red green decks at Christmas. I don't know about that. Maybe I'll bump a few up that are already in the queue. You run it like a business, which many people forget. I think there's a lot of people who stream that are like, like you see a lot of people who stream that are like, are afraid to ask for money and stuff like that, right? Or like afraid to ask to get paid for what they're doing. And like, this this is my job. I treat it like my job. So like, when I tell people that they're keeping me employed when they subscribe, it's because they are, right? Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here without them. My, my wife wouldn't let me be here without them. Couldn't, couldn't pay for daycare without the subs. They're expensive. Hey, Tenjin, thanks for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome to shipping your Bezo Bucks this way this month. 
a Divith. Thanks for the brand new Prime as well. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting me this month. Details on how my deck queue works can be found here. I would snap this off on the draw. I'm going to pause for a second on the play. This hand's like absurd with a second land on two, but we're pretty unlikely to hit that, right? Could you speak a little bit on your thoughts of playing fun decks versus established decks at major tournaments and whether it's an online or offline tournament? So the average, the average Magic the Gathering, Magic the Gathering has an incredible amount of variance in it. And what you need to remember is that while decks like Black, Green, and Jeskai consistently top eight tournaments, for every person that top eights with one of those established stock decks, there's another two or three dozen or maybe even hundreds of people at larger tournaments that don't do well with them. And I generally favor, I always view like, going to play a magic tournament especially a paper tournament where i'm taking my entire weekend as this is a magic this is a vacation for me so i go and i play the deck that i know i'm going to enjoy playing the upside on this hand is like really high if we hit our second land by two we should be okay i think Uh, the Sultai list today, I believe, has four Thief of Sanity in the main deck. It might Sultai midrange might be a better descriptor with the four thieves. The deck list can be linked can be found linked to the deck here on my website. My my body is ready to get fiery cannonated next turn. Blow me away, baby. Blow me away. Please cast the lava coil. Yeah. Sh -sh 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 -ah. How much money have I put into Arena? I think about $1,200. I have a spreadsheet somewhere where I have it all written down for tax purposes. Temple of Tilt. Temple of Tilt. Do, 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 do. Am I getting shocked here? Opt, sure. We play that land because we need to cast our red spells consistently. And we don't want to put basic mountain in our deck because we play four copies of Beneficial Marshal. Their start's really mediocre. Yeah, if they don't kill any of our things, Legion Landing flips right on over next turn, which gives us another land, which is great. Man, are we are we winning this game? I think I think we're winning this game. That's, that's so wild, right? Cause like our hand in the first game was really good and we just kinda got dumpstered because their hand was better, but this hand we like kept a mediocre one and it was just like, alright, sure. And like this board this board state's actually a really good example of like why this deck is so good against control. Because like if they play a sweeper this turn, I get two one ones and the Adanto Vanguard lives and they're still just like dead to the Marshal next turn. So like if I hear cannonade's not good enough anymore here. Noxar, 
I see your your message on Twitter, by the way. To up your sub for mobile, you need to use the desktop version because through the mobile app, you have you could the Android takes a cut, so they only do tier one subs on the mobile app. Good good morning, Exhale. Adanto Adanto is very good, very very good. So like this turn I get to do this and I'm like attack them to one. They have to chump block the Adanto. The Adanto lives. Live Adanto, live. Uh... All right. And that like wasn't an attack for lethal, but it was it was kind of an attack for lethal, right? And again, don't think I have any submissions here, so I'm gonna click. I technically did that on two lands, right? Because the Adanto was an enchantment. It's really interesting how this deck flips that really consistently to help it get to the four mana to like cast things like heroic reinforcements. I think a lot of people classify things that are spicy in Magic the Gathering as things that are kind of off meta or outside of the norm. And Adanto is just like a very stock good card in this format. Nobody, nobody's gonna be surprised when the mono white deck casts Adanto Vanguard against them. Adanto the land, it just has a CMC, yep. I guess it's kind of confusing that we're saying Adanto and there's two Adanto cards. There's Vanguard and First Fort. Maybe we should stop saying Adanto and start saying Vanguard or First Fort. The sand's great. Hey, Egg Roland, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. One, two, three. Into an elephant. What could it be? It's exactly Seal Away. You have to play Seal Away to beat it onto a Vanguard. In Jeskai. In Black, you have a couple of options like Moment of Graving of Raskas and stuff, but in in what's it called, you don't really have any others. You know, I wonder I wonder if I that's another one of those. That's pretty good. So, huh. Do I do I history of Benalia on three or do I go witness elephant? I think I'm supposed to go witness elephant here. Thanks for the support, Egg Roland. Those subs help help me keep it up. Oh, that's true. Baffling End is a card that they could play. This is a good read from the opponent here. This is this is a good read from the opponent. So they they took me playing this as a, I could have an elephant. They killed my thing in response, making me incredibly resource inefficient this turn. Which is maybe a reason to play History of Benalia. We actually tried a Danto in the board of the Esper deck, and it just wasn't good enough. What's going on, Maddie? I'm testing a good deck for tomorrow, maybe, Matthew. Would you would you disown me if I played this one tomorrow? That's unfortunate. History into reinforcements into elephants. The elephant's looking a little bit awkward here since they had that shock. Yeah, Entrancing Melody is anti-Vanguard deck. I guess this is technically another answer to Vanguard you could play in Just Guy Control.
This makes my board incredibly good against, uh, against the sweeper here. You got him, he's dead. Next turn, this will pop, which gives this a bonus too, because this is a knight, which is awesome. If they don't have a negate or a disdainful stroke here, and stroke's pretty unlikely to be boarded in. If they don't have a counter spell, I guess they could have spell pierce too. If they don't have a spell pierce for this, they should be pretty dead here. I need a hero. Do, 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 do. Rude. Spell Pierce is actually really good in this matchup for them because they counter Sororic reinforcements and others. If they want to eat this here instead of trading with one of my five five power guys, I think that's fine. Any tips on when you can drop a Loxodon? It depends. There's just so many different things. So many different considerations. So do they want to go to four and eat this and leave me with the one one? They do. Wow. That's uh, yeah, I, guess, I guess they want to keep the X four because the X four um, can block the Knights when they're three threes. But then I'm going to get to like play another venerated locks it on next turn. So that's really good for us. Why did I decide not to lock it on there? Because my history of Benalia popped off this turn. So I wanted to attack while I had the history of Benalia bonus. This also puts them like dead on board. So our good draw game one got beat by their better draw, but those post board games felt incredibly easy. Like their draws were bad and then just average and we kind of ran them over. MTGA for the first time, but I have experience with Vigilite. What would you say is the cheapest slash best deck for a beginner with some experience? The mono blue tempo deck is incredibly cheap to build. Well, we're waiting for, before we pop this next batch, I would just like to thank everyone for hanging out here today. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. Uh, if you're not familiar with my stuff, I stream full time here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. I play nothing but constructed on this channel. So if you enjoy best of three standard and modern occasionally on Magic Online, we do that here, although we do more arena than anything else. Um, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full time. I wouldn't be able to be here day in and day out without their very wonderful support. Past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. Lisa would like to get you on your way to a better night's sleep. Christy and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last six months now and really love it. I don't think we'd ever go back to traditional pillow top mattress. You can save $160 or more on your new mattress with them by checking out links bit.ly forward slash Googlebed US and bit.ly forward slash Googlebed CA. Neo produces wonderful candy flavored protein bars. You can save 10% at bit.ly forward slash Google bar by using code Hoagland. Coolstuffinc.com buy and sells a lot of cool stuff, including CCG singles using promo code Jeff5. You can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, Warhammer, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And of course, you probably hear my wonderful shuffling deck going here. My shuffling deck is protected by none other than my BCW Elite Guard sleeves using code Jeff10 at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on sleeves, deck box, and all sorts of other great, um, gaming accessories with them. I love the sleeping with Lisa ad. It's a good one. Did someone donate specifically for you to play a league or did you change your mind about them? So they got rid of ranked play for best of three. So we've been running into a much higher volume of cards I own decks, people who don't have real, real decks put together in the unranked queue. And I want to test this deck out for um, the event tomorrow. So I want to try and play against the highest volume of decks that are close to real as possible. Do you rather play Drakes or Mono Blue if you're playing a PPTQ tomorrow? Probably Drakes.
the BCW sleeves in general are like really good value for the price that they are. The BCW Elite Guards are only, uh, what are they? They're 650 for 80 sleeves, which is much, much cheaper than all the alternatives. What deck am I playing tomorrow? I don't know. I don't have to submit a deck till later tonight. Maybe this deck? Maybe something else? This hand, this hand's actually really good, right? Like, they have a Karn here, but like my next turn's gonna be Second History, Conclave Tribunal, Exile, Exile one of your things. I'm gonna give them the other card that they can't really cast here. Perfect, yeah. So I'm actually, wow, a one drop is a good draw. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Let me, let me give you a valuable lesson, chat. Ignore the Planeswalker. Ignore, ignore the Planeswalker, smork them. So tap these, exile their one three, so they're behind on a green source. Attack for two, next turn history pops off and heroic reinforcements pop off. I wanna turn off auto order trigger abilities so my history stack the correct way next turn. Most other streamers don't shill at all. They don't they don't try and sell their advertisers. If doing if doing one 60 second ad break per hour turns off people from watching, that's just like, you know, not not my problem. They can go somewhere else. I think I think one 60 second ad break per hour is more than reasonable. I'm I'm pretty sure they're only the chocolate bars. I haven't, I haven't calculated how much damage we're doing next turn, but I'm pretty sure it's a metric ton. It is, it is a metric ton. All right, so when we stack these triggers, I want to make it so good. We create the 2-2 two -two before we give them, before we give them 2-1, because this gives everything haste. Da -da 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 -da! Charge. Uh, they block these two and they take 10 dead. They take they take very dead Man, this black green matchup is really hard This is like I was testing I did miss two points of damage. You're right. I could have attacked and then used the knight post combat You are correct, Betty. Yeah, I was testing different things against the black green deck last night and I just are against this deck last night. I they just I just kept getting destroyed in draws like that. Just like, all right, kill you. All right, kill you. All right, kill you. Not quite a Hooklandia joke, but I'll take it. Let's go ahead, Brecken. Wild Growth Walker is very good versus aggro, isn't it? I think I just want to trim the enchantment removal because it's kind of a liability this match. We just bring in Takatli. I'm told this matchup is bad for us. Our draw was really good there. Our draw was really good there. It wasn't a hundred percent our nut draw, but it was pretty close. It was pretty close. Turn, turn to Kotli on our guard. Let's do it. They mulligan to six. Trimming Vanguard. That's probably a good suggestion. Trimming Vanguard is probably a good suggestion. I think you're. I think you're right. There's three frenzy in my sideboard, trusty. One, two, three. I did not stream Mono Black Banefire yesterday. Oh, I'm supposed to cut the venerated Loxodons. That's, that's how we're supposed to sideboard chat. I'm supposed to cut the venerated Loxodons when I board in the Takatli Honor Guards. That's, that's how, and this is still like a free 4-4 this turn. So like it's, it's fine, but like, 
We're supposed to cut the venerated Loxodon. Figured it out. All right, I'm gonna throw away this one one so that way I can flip the legions landing here. Reply your own slaughter the straw grape. All right, we're gonna go back to the sideboard drawing board for game three if we lose this one. But things are things are looking pretty good. And Adanto Vanguard's actually looking pretty reasonable here, right? I just cast the Vanguard that turn. And I'm not going to play anything else out here because finality is their way they kill us. So I'm just going to do my best to play around that. <laughs> nice magic deck. Woo, doggy. Is that one good? What do we, what do we think of that one? Uh, if I attack with everything, this is unblocked and they have to block one creature to each of one, two, three, four, five. So I can attack with this because they can't double block it because otherwise they die. Goodbye, friends. <sighs> I should probably just play this tomorrow. This deck is really good. Not impressive, but it's fine. Angle Bomb was not playing. He was not playing um what's it called? Uh heroic reinforcements, right? I really, I really like heroic reinforcements. Is the list that's on my site? It's not. This is the list that this is the list that one of my buddies gave me last night. The chromatic black deck's really clunky and awkward in my experience, Matt. Not a huge fan of it. So I need to draw an untapped land here to play Loxodon next turn. I mean, I don't know if the invite's really any accomplishment. They invited basically everybody who streams a bunch of magic. So hopefully we draw one mana spell this turn and then I'll untap land the following turn. History of Benalia. All right, I guess I do this now. I'm gonna pump the brakes for a hot second here. Yeah, tomorrow starts at 10 a.m. PST. Watsy did not acknowledge that I exist, Major Mouse. This is an event being run by Twitch. Not Wizards of the Coast, which is why I got an invitation to it. Oh, 
All right. If we draw the land next turn, we'll be in a great spot. Yeah, Twitch knows I exist because they, they're very much aware of my subscriber count. For people that are newer to the magic world of my content, Wizards of the Coast generally isn't very favorable to people who are critical of the decisions that they make. When Wizards of the Coast makes a bad decision, I, I post about it and let them know that this was stupid and this is what I think they could or should have done better. And they're, they're not a big fan of that. Even, even without, even without the land drawer attack next turn is still very good because both of these are knights. And actually, actually we have lethal on board? Not quite, not quite. I don't know. Figure it out. So the Ubisoft of card games, yeah, basically. Never forget, chat, that the best source of card advantage in Magic the Gathering is killing your opponents while they still have cards in their hand. Is this a matchup where I'm supposed to pull up into Experimental Frenzy? I think it is. I think so they're they're playing Boros Angels, right? Which I think is supposed to be another hard matchup for us. Where did my where did my land go? It just like hid my mountain. Any anyone? Where did where did my where did my land go? All right, if I hit reset, it reappears. You have to reset the filters. Good, good stuff. Good to, good to learn before tomorrow. Yeah, the vanguards potentially just get bricked walled. That being said, like, if they have sweepers, vanguard is really good against their sweepers. You have to add the land first. Maybe, maybe it's just get rid of these. Let's try this. I don't I don't actually know what I'm doing here. I'm just figuring it out as we go. Easy mulligan here. Now, I think if you're bane firing big angels, that's probably playing to not lose. The bane fires are in the sideboard for the Jeskai deck, so you can like burn them out as the game goes along. It might be a little greedy to keep this on top of my deck, but this is just one of my more powerful cards in the in the in the deck, so I want to keep this. I think keeping it means I'm more likely to like miss my third land drop, but I think having this card is pretty important. Maybe I'm supposed to play Legion's Landing on two rather than Hunted Witness because if they like have their Exile spell, that would be kind of bad for me. I think I'm okay if they block this and pay four health, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack with Hunted Witness here. It's probably just a free hit for one, basically. Do they have a history? I feel like they probably have. Seal away, sure. Um, if that's their only play this turn, that seems pretty good for us. I have a bunch of Conclave Tribunals in my hand to clean up their larger threats. Drawing 3x Tribunal is a little bit awkward here. So if they play a blocker out, I can Tribunal off of my History Token and still attack. Second History. Yeah, 
It's, pro it's probably just double history, right? This lets me this lets me attack with three, four, three sex turn and flip the Legion's landing. games then thank you very much for the the tip there i appreciate that merry christmas thoughts on storm entity and thing bird instead of swift spear better interaction with i don't actually know what storm entity does is storm entity the card where it, get, it comes into play with the one one counter it basically has storm but it gets one one counters instead is that the one i'm not sure if that card's particularly good conclave tribunal is so good in this deck So you get to exile a resplendent angel, we'll attack for 12, they'll trade for one, they'll take eight down to 11, and next turn this pops off again. This flips over for us also, which is great. Sure, so they're dead. Yeah, they're dead. Slowly digging out of the mind. Thank you, Mr. Dynamite, for the two-month reset. Welcome back. I appreciate that. So they can block a 4-4, four, four, and then uh, they take 10, 4-3. This isn't even just a 3-0. It's like, this was like an incredibly easy 3-0, right? Like, we had a hard time in the first game that we played, and like the rest of these have just been, they've not been close. Is there a deck that beats up on us? I'm told green black is hard, but if you draw Takatli on our guard, that stops being true. This is a video game, gotta turn up the difficulty setting. This deck even has a lot of draws that beat Jeskai control. Adanto Vanguard is a messed up magic card. Like Adanto Vanguard and the Loxodon like beat Duffin and Clarion pretty, pretty well. History of Benali is also very, very strong. Yeah, the Demir deck's pretty terrible, though. It's, like, not playable in general in the format. It's super clunky and awkward. You're right that the Demir deck like has tools like Moment of Craving and Vraska's Contempt to deal with Adancho, but in general, its tools just don't line up well. There's many people making great content on Twitch. Here's this month's Bezo Bucks. Come eat pizza. Thanks for shipping those this way this month. I think I'm supposed to bottom this, right? This deck has a lot of game against Ritualists with a lot of its draws too. Between the Escort and Adanto Vanguard and the Hunted Witness, you have a lot of play against Ritual of Soot. Elephant also gives you play against Ritual of Soot. Hey, moniker, bump a modern deck of your choice. Will do. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. I mean, like, this five is kind of great. Sure, if you want to beat this deck specifically, Golden Demise is very good against it. Golden Demise is really mediocre against a lot of other decks that people play in the format, though. Cassie Girl, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. Welcome. All right, really want to draw an untap plan next turn, which is like Marshall into Flip Legion's Landing. I've been a sub for three months. Where's the time gone? Brando, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Yeah, Soot, Soot's much better against... Uh, so it's much better against green black. All right. I think I just let these train. I could sacrifice this to save that, but then I deal three less damage this turn. 
Hopefully this is just a 2-1 so that Bet Marshall can attack next turn. That's unfortunate. All right, so they don't have more Explore creatures in their hand. Otherwise, they would have kept the Wild Growth Walker. That's a pretty good one. Um, gosh, we're one, we're one land off of Activate, First Fort, plus play the Loxodons. Like, I guess I'm just playing the Loxodon. Just a little sad that we're one off doing both. Marshall has first strike. That's not true. Nice green black deck. Is this the plan? Three of these and an Adanto out for Tagatli Honor Guard in? I think that's the plan. I think a Johnny's for the control matchups. I mean, like, yeah, look at look at how many forums are in this deck list. This deck's incredibly streamlined. I definitely agree with that assessment. A Johnny does buy back to Kotli, that's true. It's possible I want a Johnny in this matchup. I don't know though. Sure. It doesn't have Takatli in it, but like it's a really good hand. They remove reinforcements? Really? Is that, is that for real? I don't know if I believe that. That card's real good. Uh, green Black kills Takatli with uh, Cast Down and Assassin's Trophy. Pump the brakes for half a turn. We'll flip this next turn. Yeah, jo Johnny's very slow in the faster games. Yeah, I agree with that comparison. Reinforcements is like the collecting company of this deck. This is an accurate assessment. This could be a game where we stall out here, so... Let's attack to get my third land. I assume we're going to see some trade-offs happen here. Keep my Sky March. I'm going to play this. Yeah, we're probably dead here. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan more aggressively for Takatli when we're on the draw. Why do those seem like bad blocks for the maze? Remember, if you're going to criticize play, be constructive and specific. I'm just taking a blocker out of the way here. It's a little aggressive, but I think it's correct. I get to shoot my tribunal. I've lost so much already. I won't lose more. That can't help you now. So here's the thing, JW. If if I'm playing around Vivian, I should just not have Conclave Tribunal on my deck post board. That's. I think that's the case. This is a card I would kind of expect them to board out against the one drop aggro deck. Obviously they didn't and now like we're pretty dead, but I think on average it's not unreasonable to expect that card to like get boarded out against us. Sure, but I'm saying like, again, like if I'm not expecting that card to come out, the suggestion isn't play around it. It's cut, it's cut the Conclave Tribunals. That's, that's the reasonable suggestion. The reasonable suggestion is cut the Conclave Tribunals.
Oh, Legion's Landing gives City Blessing. Good call. That's something I should keep. That's something I was not keeping track of that I should be. Am I supposed to board in Frenzy in this matchup? I feel like this isn't a Frenzy matchup, but maybe that's wrong. Come to me. Maybe this matchup goes long enough that I'm supposed to board in Frenzy. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're done at this point, right? I guess I could draw heroic reinforcements. I don't think it is, Matt. Grind, grind me out, but that's not, I don't, so like, here's the thing. Here's the thing where you wanna, when you're pivoting post board, am I gonna grind better than the green black deck? I'm not, right? My best chance to beat the green black deck is to go underneath them, right? What are we playing towards? Attacking them instead of attacking Vivian, winning the game. Activating this a couple of times, then drawing heroic reinforcements and attacking for lethal. Spinning my tires, attacking the Vivian doesn't accomplish anything. Rather than attack Vivian, I'd, ra I'd rather just concede. Like, attacking Vivian is basically a concession. So like, here's the thing that a lot of people miss a lot of the time. Obviously, I'm very lucky to draw the heroic reinforcements there. But here's the thing. Good players play to their outs to allow themselves to get lucky. The difference between a good player and a mediocre player is that a good player can look at the game and go, these are the cards I need to draw, I could draw to pull me back into this game. And I talked about that, right? I talked about this is why I'm not attacking Vivian. This is why I'm pressuring their health total. This is my out. And you're not always going to hit those outs when you play to them, but playing to those outs in a game where you're behind is better than slowly losing the game. Recognizing your game plan and being aware of what the cards you need to draw to win the game are is very important. So they're down, they're down to four here. So they're not quite dead on board, but they're definitely dead to another heroic reinforcements. I've seen things that would break someone like you. I am at 29 as well, that is true. So like, even if I don't draw another re heroic reinforcements right away, I can just like hang tight on this Adanto for a little bit, making more threats. Am I getting finality? This is probably a finality, right? That's what that, that's what that attack signifies. Yeah. If they don't have a blocker, heroic reinforcements is lethal off the top. So do you have a two drop? Looks like they have a two drop. It's not, it's not a mistake because it doesn't matter. I mean, let me tell you this thing that has no impact on the game is a mistake. Stop it. Don't waste mental energy on that. It doesn't mean anything. You're not representing anything by holding up another, another planes. It's fine. They can't play around anything. No one said restoration was painless. Please keep in mind, if you want to criticize any play you see on this stream, whether it be my play or my opponent's play, you need to be constructive and specific. A good example of that is, that play was bad, and the reason why it was bad is X. If you do are not constructive and specific with your criticisms, you will get a 10 minute break in my chat. Probably slipped away here at this point, as Heroic Reinforced is no longer an out now, right? I 
Am I dead on board? Not quite. Balance comes. So conceding to an explorer creature here. That is not an explorer creature. Good morning, Mr. Miggs. Good morning, everybody. Got 1,300 people here for standard this morning. Everyone's having a good Monday wherever you're at. So if they attack with everything here, I block here and then I go to one. So dead to a removal spell. And we've got another shot to draw heroic reinforcements next turn. Unless they have an explore creature in one of these three, these three cards over here. This could dig them to an explore creature. No justice stream. Drawing the heroic reinforcements would be perfect justice. I've been playing to the out of drawing heroic reinforcements this entire game. Did I just get a good donation? I don't think so. Gifts forgiven. I might have missed gifts forgiven resub in there while I was yelling at people. Dead but always smart. So who's the real? What's going on? Gifts forgiven. Yeah, I think that. I think that hip locks it up. I think digging for an explore creature is better than remove history there gives them more health to beat a heroic reinforcements. That's fine. We didn't draw the reinforcements anyways, so it's okay. I think I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded. Although honestly, maybe the Trim Conclave Tribunal is the thing that I want to be doing. Maybe that's what I want to get rid of. I don't know. The tempo on the Conclave Tribunal is like really good. They have a bunch of Vivians in their deck though. This card's pretty okay on the play too, though. It brings back a, it brings back Vanguard as well. I'm gonna leave one Tribunal in. A Johnny's like a Johnny's really flexible because he's not just grind; he's also aggression, right? Like a Johnny can add two power a turn to my board. Yeah, we were we were really close to winning that game, and I didn't have an Adanto Vanguard, right? Or uh, a Takatli Honor Guard. I mean, this hand's kind of the stones if it curves out, right? Do, 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 do. And then the goal here is even if we miss land drops, hopefully if we do miss land drops, we draw like one and two mana spells so we can like still play magic. If we draw more three and four mana spells, we're likely to lose this game. But if we draw lands or one, two, three mana spells now, we're probably just gonna run them O-V-E-R. So we're hoping to dodge Golden Demise here. And even if they draw Golden Demise, if we hit a land for the Ajani, we'll still be in this game. Okay. So we need to draw a land here. All right, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. And again, one of the things I think people miss so often when they're talking about mulliganing theory is like, yes, this hand needs to draw lands to be good, but some hands need to draw lands and some hands need to draw spell spells. And the question you have to ask yourself is what's, what's more likely to happen? Am I more likely to draw lands with this hand that I've kept on six or am I more likely to have a five that wins the game? And I think I'm far more likely to draw lands with this six card hand than I am to win the game on five cards. attack the attack with my my marshal might be a little aggressive there i don't know if that trade's necessarily good for us there's a good chance they just like don't have any more explore creatures so like now the board's kind of locked up and again just like coming down to how night and day the matchup is with uh with the cotley honor guard right just like none of their cards would have had text boxes this game except for the golden demise if i'd have had to cotley
Not necessarily, Bron Supligar. Like, what if what if the game goes like this and I never draw my fourth land? I'm much better off having traded. Like, if they have another explore creature there, I'm just like dead to rights. Yeah, I'm told green black is favored in this matchup. They go like land finality here. It's mostly lights out. Even Chupacabra is pretty bad for us. If we if we don't see an honor guard, we're probably behind. You can definitely steal games. I feel like I feel like it's not unreasonable to like steal steal a game and like win one of the post board games with Takatli. Woof. And they got back the wild growth walkers. They probably have an explorer creature in their hand. Honor guard. Yeah, I think I think the fact that we just like didn't draw any lands this game is just gonna gonna brick off. We needed we needed the fourth land, right? Like obviously we hit lands two and three, but like with two four drops in our hand, we just can't make enough strides. I'm gonna give you a timeout if Deckmaster says there's honor guards in my deck. Oh, Deckmaster, you're talking about the overlay. I don't think Deckmaster updates when you when you sideboard. They're on the stream decker. Yeah, that matchup seems seems tough when you don't draw the honor guard post board. Actually, I don't even know if that's true. Like, if we would have just hit a fourth land there for our two our two pieces of top end, we probably would have run them over. And like, remember that game? Like that game, they had their best possible card on three, right? Golden demise. And if we would have hit our fourth land, we probably would have been fine. So I think I think that's true. Yeah, they drew. They had demise exactly on curve. And I didn't draw Honor Guard, and we could have been in the game with a fourth land. So I wouldn't be surprised that matchup's pretty close. I'm not playing Pirates tomorrow. The sand's very good. Just gonna play a two one on one here. Yeah, I agree. For what for what we had and what what they drew like we definitely had a reasonable shot there which is impressive see if they have a thought erasure for the history of banalia or not sure he's gone jim the worst part about having a danto vanguard in play is you can't auto pass it's so sad I think we're on the ignore the Sorkin plan. Like, I can't kill it next turn anyways, right? If I draw the Lord, I will kill this, but I didn't, so we're not. I think, I think we're getting turn four nived, right? Like, they discarded a niv. Might demands power. And then uh, we're pretty dead here. We'll go ahead and pack it up, pack it in. I'll add a command for artifact. Artifact is unwatchable, unbalanced, and secondary markets suck. Wow, did they? Huh, okay, deal. They bin this and maybe they didn't have a land?
Black Green's bad matchups are the greedy mid-range decks that have no respect for aggro. So decks like Chromatic Black and decks like uh, some Jeskai control variants tend to do very well against uh, in those type of situations. What's going on, Jack? So next turn, history will pop off. If they have a ritual as soot next turn, I get to keep a Danto Vanguard, a Knight token, and a token from this. So not in a good spot, but still okay. Yeah, the format the format's a little bit cyclical. The decks, the decks that don't respect aggro are good against the decks that respect aggro and vice and then bad against aggro. So like you know, the more greedy decks in the format tend to get run out by decks like this. I will call the dragons. Wow, they hit both. Okay. Interesting. Conclave Tribunal. That's unfortunate. I think Demure Control lacks a lot of tools to be super successful in terms of competitiveness. The fact that you can't answer enchantments in those colors is a big deal. They're taking a pretty big hit here. Am I dead next turn if I pay four? Probably dead next turn if I pay four. This is a sorcery. This is not an instant. I think I'm just letting that happen because they're gonna get to draw a card and just kill it with niv it anyways. Hey, G Mansala, thank you very much for the brand new, or the eight month reset there, I appreciate that, welcome back. Yeah, Sarkin also draws a card. And if they have any amount of spells in their hand to trigger this, we'll probably dead. Don't doubt my methods. Yeah, those games of magic just aren't fun, in my opinion, Dr. Leppy. They just like mono feel bads. Okay. They have a ritualist sit here. Sometimes they want it more than you. Man, the black, black, red, red on three that's also playing Niv Mizzet. That seems incredibly greedy. What am I supposed to trim here? Is it Venerated Loxodon? Because they're killing my board fairly often. I think it's Venerated Loxodon. And maybe some of my one drops. You have won by making a token and then attacking, attacking for four. No, because they were at seven and that only hits for six. I'll never understand people that come into a Twitch chat and complain about the thing that they're watching on that Twitch channel. It must be really difficult to get by in life not realizing that you can change what's in your web browser. Your web browser's just like locked onto my Twitch channel and can never escape. That's gotta be miserable. I almost feel bad for them. Yeah, yeah, we're one we're one short on that one. I have no arms and can't change the channel. It's it's okay if you don't like something a Twitch streamer is streaming. No no deck or game or strategy is gonna appeal to all players. Oh the sideboard basic mountain. Do I mulligan this? Eh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this here, play this, play this. That seems fine. So I get to do this into this into attack with three dorks, flip this next turn, play the Beneficial Marshal. Can't change the channel, so I might as well sub. What's going on, Gengar? Thanks for the six months. I appreciate that. Half a year, welcome back. So keep it being employed here. Boop, boop. Give him a little, give him a little love tap there. Looking to draw our bombs at this point. Experimental frenzies and heroic reinforcements. I went three and one in the Invitational with Elves. The deck's really good. Just like anytime Frenzy's in your deck and you can cast it, it would be really good, right? I'm gonna do standard build arounds for the new set at 25, I think, Nivik, just to encourage people to submit them. Because I like to brew when a new set drops. Nice control deck. Uh, I think I'm happy with what I did there. Just keep our sideboard plan. January 19th, yep. What does brewing mean? Brewing refers to creating new deck ideas. So a lot of the decks, so this deck actually isn't a viewer submission. This is a deck I'm considering playing for the tournament tomorrow, but a lot of the decks we play on this channel are viewer submissions. And one of the things I do for larger donations is I'll build a specific deck idea around a card or set of cards that you would like to see a deck built around. Yeah, I'm super excited for Merfolk too. As a, a lover of all things bad and tempo, Merfolk sounds great. Seven months, what's going on Thump Dog? Thanks for the support, I appreciate it, welcome back. Opponent kept seven, come at me. We won't strictly have new Merfolk cards, so much as we're going to guaranteed have um, a breeding pool, which gives us a better better mana base for for the Simic decks. I'm gonna continue playing around a sweeper here. Is a good resource for looking at cards for the next set. There's a site called mythicspoiler.com that usually has most of them in it, but there aren't that many spoilers yet. They just had a few initial leaks from people getting product earlier than they're supposed to. So at this point, I'm probably not putting any more creatures into play until they deal with the board that I have. Did we just get our first official ones? So like, do I want to play more creatures here? They don't have a second black source at the moment. Do I want to, do I want to push all my chips in? I have three, four, five, six points in play. This does put lethal into play. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to push my chips in towards the center. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to play that too. Get this going. 
And this is one of the most important parts about playing aggressive decks is that you need to look at different board states and go, okay, what can I afford to beat here? And what do I just lose to? And sometimes you can beat sweepers and sometimes you can't. So striking that balance between when you're supposed to make them have it and when you're supposed to hold back and be conservative is one of the more, more difficult skills to have as an, as an aggressive player. Hey, Marty, thanks for the $10 tip. I appreciate it. I hate your content. Here's $10 to put Meme Kid in the queue. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely send me send me a list. All right, so with this land drop, there's no reason to play this because I can just activate it onto here. So like game, it's funny how these games played out because ga after game one, I commented on my opponent's spell base not being very good or consistent for the, the mana base not being good at casting their spells consistently. And they very likely lost that game because they didn't hit black mana early enough, right? So these three color decks definitely come at a very real cost. One of the big upsides to playing this trim aggressive deck that's mostly one color is that you get to play magic and execute your game plan basically every single game that you don't mulligan to four. Hand needs a red source, but two, three, three, two, three, four is fine. If we go two, three, four, five, the game is probably over against almost anything. It's just one of our, our, our best draws on the play if we hit the red source. Yeah, this game would have been insane on the draw. We'd have had a one drop. Tron will never beat this hate card, says Increasingly Nervous Man for the 10th time this year. Can someone link me the new Tron hate card directly so I can pull it up? Whenever an opponent casts a spell if no mana was cast, that doesn't seem very good. Maybe it's just me, but that doesn't seem very good. This is a great draw because it lets this attack in. It's also a knight to get pumped by this next turn. History of Benalia game one out of my opponent likely implies that they're playing some kind of Just Guy Angels rather than a Just Guy Control deck. That being said, Just Guy Angels often has Deafening Clarion in it, so that's still a card I need to be concerned about here. July, sure. Yeah, it doesn't impact non-creature cards. Smush. Is this deck good? What do we think? There might be there might be something to this one chat but like are we just like didn't just didn't even hit the fourth land or the red source for the heroic reinforcement said the absolute nuts and we're still just trucking over them it's like beep beep there's no breaks on this mono white aggro train it's rolling on through Should have played Bodyguard to play around Clarion. That's a good suggestion. I like that suggestion. That is a better line. I think I'm supposed to pull up against... I think I'm supposed to pull up, especially on the draw. Bring in the Frenzies. What do we... What do we think of that? The Sky March are probably kind of mediocre because they have a bunch of Flyers. If I'm cutting the Sky Marches, does that make Venerated Loxodon not good enough? Maybe. Maybe I'm supposed to cut the Loxodons instead of the Sky Marches. I think this is a Frenzy matchup, especially on the draw. I can see on the play just like being trim and like pressuring them. But on the draw, I think I want access to this card. I take the coward split here. Bane fires for Jeskai control. 
Uh, Baffling End is for the mirror match and for other aggressive decks. This archetype wants to play Baffling End as opposed to Seal Away because Seal Away can't exile blockers, whereas Baffling End can. There's an unconditional tap land because I like casting my spells. We have both a triple white card in our deck and red spells. You're gonna feel a lot like a normal week, what's going on, goalie? So really wanted to draw a two mana spell there or another one mana spell, but like, I'm gonna get to curve out into my more expensive things here, so this seems fine for us. Get to go Banalia into Experimental Frenzy the following turn, potentially. Maybe just Conclave Tribunal. They've got a whole lot of nothing going on over there, huh? Yeah, this format's a lot less brutal than modern, which is one of the reasons why I like it. Excellent binding. Man, this Conclave Tribunal is about to be great. So if I cast this, and I can cast this, and then I can Conclave to <laughs> This card is so good. Oh, that's, uh, mm, that's nummy. Oh, I missed two damage. I missed, I missed two damage. I got it. I got, I was so excited. I missed two damage. I get it. I missed it. Thank you. You have Alira, sure. That's kind of rude. The Saltai Merfolk deck was really sweet, Time Lord. I liked it a lot. Shouldn't you have played Frenzy before the land? No, I think I'm more likely to have a one drop on top than the land. What do I need to do to make sure Mardu Prison is this Wednesday? Uh... I am not sure offhand, Goalie. I need to take a look at the queue. So what happens if I attack with everything here? If I attack with everything, they eat one of my things. I think I'm just supposed to go nuts with the, with the experimental frenzy, right? I think I'm just supposed to go nuts with the experimental frenzy or as nuts as possible. I think this should do it. Definitely goalie. I appreciate the support. Yo, what do we, what do we think of this? Uh, what do we think of this experimental frenzy card? Oh, you know what I think I was supposed to do last turn? I think I was supposed to put one of these on this other Dauntless Bodyguard and attack for five is what should have happened there. Incoming Ursus Ruinous Blast. No, my people need me. My people need me. What's going on, Tannen?
You think I'm allowed to show this on Twitch? Am I gonna get in trouble? Am I? Is this is this legal to display on the internet? Was that a, was that a good turn? Is is this frenzy card good? Check yes no. All right, well, I mean, you lived through the turn, opponent. Go. But their knights are so big, chat. Their knights are so big. Oh, that's true. I should use the marshal to convoke. I agree with that assessment. Oh no, not my marshal. How will I ever win the game now, opponent? Oh no! So I just need to attack around, uh, settle the wreckage this turn. Like attack with enough stuff that I win. I win through settle. So I jumped with the knight instead of the witness in case their last card was a sweeper, Tom. Oh, but I had the Adantos, like I don't think that really mattered. We lost a match to Green Black. I think I'm gonna play this tomorrow. This deck's really good. If I want, if I want the best chance of getting three thousand dollars tomorrow, this feels like the deck to play. And uh, I can't wait to play this on mobile, right? Thanks for sticking through with me through this pregnancy one trimester to go. It's going on Turkey later. The tournament, the tournament is tomorrow. I think, I think this is one. Everybody playing in the tournament will be streaming, streaming the tournament. Yeah, I don't really know that I have, that I have anything to comment on, on changing here. I think I'm going to take a look at a bunch of different red white lists between when I finish streaming today and later tonight and like try and find an amalgamation of exactly what I want to, what I want to be doing here. But I think this is probably the deck to play. The tournament starts at uh, 10 a.m. PST tomorrow. 